working on this light fixture in my house. It's been flickering some and it's just this fixture. It's not the whole circuit. So the problem is up here. That doesn't surprise me because this house was built in 45 and they kind of made it inconvenient. Of course it was right after the war so they were used to stretching materials as far as they could. So you can see what's happened here. They got a small box there. I mean is that even a three inch? And look at that mess in there. Because what they've done is this is not just a, a hanger for this light it's also a junction box for the rest of the circuit so there's actually four different runs of Romex entering this box joining here and then joining the lamp so it's really tight to work in there and what they did is they gave you just enough wire to get into the box there's very little that you can pull out and also what I have found when I've worked on uh, outlets in this house the exposed part of the wiring is very, not the exposed wire, but the insulation, it's very brittle. It'll break off on you when you uh, work with it. So what I've done in other places and what I'll do here is I will put a 4 inch box on top of the rafter or nearby and run those four junctions, the four leads to that and use that as the junction box and then drop one line down here to the lamp. What that does is two things. One is it makes the box less crowded. But what I've found is when you start peeling back the insulation on the Romex, or whatever it was called back then, it's that uh, braided cloth covered one. The sheathing is cloth. Um, but when you peel that back, the insulation's fine. The wires are in good shape beyond where they're exposed here. So the elements from time just made it old and brittle. So if I can cut the wire back, it'll be fresh and good again. So I'm going to take those four leads, put them in that junction box, and then cut them back so we got good wiring, and then drop another lead down here. Hoping that I got enough, because two leads go this way and two leads go that way so they're kind of fighting for length to get to it what I'm hoping is is that they'll, they'll still make it up top to that box if not what I'll have to do it'll be kind of hokey but it's the only way to do it without actually rewiring the house will be to put a junction box here and here run the factory wires to those boxes and then join it well actually I wouldn't have to join them I could just connect them all up in either one of the boxes and then run a lead to here but hopefully it won't be uh, that convoluted so let me start pulling this apart got the fixture off you can see here what I'm talking about insulation's just cracking off of it And how much wire they've crammed up into this little box. So, I guess this one here is the trigger from the light switch. Yeah, this is the, I'm sorry, this is the trigger from the light switch. So that means that one white one's the trigger to the light switch. So these two are the light switch. And this one uses reds for the hot instead of black. Common still white. Alright, let me get to work on it. 
Okay, we're on the attic side, obviously. And the irony is, I have electrical up here, but it's on the same circuit as this fixture. So we're working by flashlight. Ah, darn it. I should wear a particulate mask up here. This dust is nasty. I think I'm gonna have to go down, straighten those wires out so they can come out of there. So what my goal is, is to take this four inch box, straddle the uh, stud like so, and just run those four leads to it, and then a new lead from here to the original fixture. It'll be a lot more tidier and safer because I'll be getting rid of that flicker, which means something isn't making a good connection. And it'll also get rid of this brittle insulation. Once I cut that back, it gets good again. At least it has so far. But I am going back down. Well, unfortunately, it looks like I am going to need a second box. Because no matter where I place this, two of these leads are long enough to where I can cut them back. <coughs> excuse me. And uh, make it work. But the other two... The other two, if I cut them back any farther, I'm going to be a little too short. And I do need to cut them back. i got to get that crispy garbage off of there. So... I'm going to have to go get another box, but at least I can start with this one. I'll bring it back in a bit. See, after I've got the junk cut off and the new wire, or the hidden wire spliced back, you can see i got nice fresh wire. Here's a piece of the insulation. It's still very pliable. So it's just the stuff that was exposed to the atmosphere that got brittle over time. <clears throat> okay, I'm ready to wrap it up up top here. I was able to position... <coughs> Excuse me, this dust is horrible. I was able to position the new box to where I was able to get three of the cables into it. And I found I had this box in stock, and the only reason I needed that was just to put an extension on the uh, the line for the uh, wall switch. So that's going to work. I will need to stop by Ace later and pick up a cover for this one. Got a cover for the new box, but not couldn't find one for the old one. Yeah, this isn't really a how-to video. I'm not an electrician. And uh, if you don't know what you're doing with household current, you really shouldn't mess with it. So I'll just post this as an entertainment video. But if you have lights that are flickering in your house, you do want to get that checked out. Because that usually means you got a bad connection or a short somewhere. The short will be kind of obvious because you'll be popping breakers, but if the lights are flickering and the breakers aren't going, it could be a bad connection. It could be an overload too, but um, bad connections you don't want to leave be because eventually they'll get hot and cause a fire, so you do want to get on that. So that's why I got on this because, like I said, in that bedroom, when the lights were on, they would flicker a little bit, but only in that bedroom, so I'm pretty sure it was just a combination of 
this mess here. I will give them that much. They did use a 10 gauge wire when they wired the house. But I guess being an all electric house, that made sense. All right, I'm picking up my tools and going back down. And now a lot less cluttered. <coughs> Excuse me, there I go again. Yeah, a lot cleaner than before. Works fine, no flickering, so mission accomplished.